Welcome to Down the Road Show. It's another beautiful day. I just got done with a great interview. These are a new series of podcasts I'm doing called Cannabis Conversations with Casey, where I'm trying to normalize the word cannabis and the people in the industry and bring you those faces of people I've met on Clubhouse that have been educating me over the last several months that I've just grown to love and respect as family, as friends, and as industry leaders, as far as I'm concerned. So let's get right to our next guest today. How are you doing, son? It's a pleasure to finally see you face to face for the first time in four yeah. months. Yeah, we've been talking a lot. I, I'm, I'm doing great. Um, uh, you know, we had a, a big rainstorm, so I've been helping uh, some of the neighbors, and I know up northern California was worse, but but uh, yeah, I'm doing good. It, uh, you know, and I did the the normal thing most people do: talk about the weather first. Yeah, well, we I need to. That. I'm from California. I'm from California. We need, I, I'm used to be from there. I know how bad we need the, the rain, like yeah. all the time. So yeah, it's like we don't get it that often. So it was like exciting. <laughs> yeah. No, that look, that Tony Tony song was for real. It never rains in Southern California. Like that was a real yeah. thing in the 90s. So <laughs> so because I, I like to give a quick introduction about, you know, who my guest is. So that way people know who they're listening to. Sure. You have you, you. What's your Ph.D. in? Oh, I don't have a Ph.D. Oh, wait, what are, what are your different degrees in? I know you got more than one. <laughs> I'm a plasma physicist. Um, I'm a mechanical engineer. And uh, I specialize in surface modification and advanced materials. But I'm also a biomimicry evangelist, a vegan, and a musician. Um, and because of your own culture, mm -hmm. uh, how does that play a part, too? It's hard because... Uh, just like cannabis played a hard part in my life, you know, um, I grew up in Berkeley and I'm, I was born in the Fiji Islands, but I'm Indian descent. My family is from Andhra Pradesh, which is, you know, Southeast India. I'm a Brahmin. Uh, and my dad, you know, we have a long line of healers in our family, uh, including my dad, who is also a medical uh, no, I, I just went after my my uh, my mechanical engineering degree and uh, minored in in other things that were interesting, but I never went after my PhD. But you know, we're uh, Azentive, Our company, a Zen Initiative, Azentive, uh, is my partner, uh, Kat Donnelly, Doctor Kat Donnelly. She's badass. She's got like two masters in engineering and her PhD out of MIT. So she should be on. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll have her on next. I want, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I've been getting to know you for quite a while. I wanted to get to know more of your story too, sure, uh, sure. especially because, you know, I, I still haven't even heard any of your music. Like, so yeah, yeah, I hear you. You forgot to send that to me on Facebook. We're going to make sure true. we get that done this week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. Okay. So there, there's, there's a background. That's why I wanted to have Sun on because like, you know, you got this amazing light company, but it's, it's more than that that you're working with, uh, because it's, uh, it doesn't surprise me that you just said you come from a family of healers. That does not surprise me at all. Cause I've always kind of felt your healing, loving nature. Every time you're in the clubhouse rooms talking. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let's get to the sacred part of the plant and the healing nature of the plant and how that helps drive you as an innovator, uh, with, with your sun technology. Okay. Well, being a biomimicry evangelist, and for those people who don't understand biomimicry, the word, it's really emulating Mother Nature in tech. When people say tech, uh, I say that the masters, the mentors, is just outside your door. That majority of Life's problems can be solved by just looking outdoors, by looking and being, not just looking with your eyes, but feeling, touching, smelling, putting your feet in, in soil, being in the ocean, feeling the breeze against your cheeks. You know, just be with it because you and everybody is a very important part of it all. And so when we started looking at what we could do in our space. Um, you know, I, I had rheumatic fever out of Fiji when I came from the Fiji Islands um, to the States. Uh, and it turned into rheumatoid arthritis. 
and you know even at 16 i couldn't move very much lots of pain in my fingers and as you know cannabis is an anti-inflammatory so much to the chagrin of my parents although they didn't know about it until much later in life uh, being a conservative indian family i'm a brahmin so it was really hard for me and, and but then i grew up in berkeley I mean, why would you take your son to Berkeley, right? <laughs> and so I ended up partaking, obviously. This is a time when Berkeley was, I, you, know, I, you know, you're talking about stigma. There was no stigma in Berkeley about cannabis. Um, or LSD. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. And we'd run, we'd, we'd, you know, go up to Humboldt and we'd go up to uh, uh, that area and pick up and we had friends growing up there and you know uh so that whole area emerald triangle all of that has been very close and near dear to me but in the real life the normalized life that we all live i had to get a degree i had to you know get married i had to get a car i had to get a job i had to get a mortgage check check, <laughs> check all the boxes there. yeah but then later you know i retired when i was at 40 pretty early and uh, and then and, and I because I did well and I decided when Kat wanted to start a new company we were in the energy world at that time a company called Empower Efficiency Empower Efficiency and our goal was to do um, community-based programs large saving energy across 20 towns in Connecticut or we did it in San Francisco uh, we did it so it's all about changing behavior uh and gamifying some of it to 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 save energy and so we came into the sustainability world and then azentiv is a wellness sustainability and emerging technology company and so as a biomimicry i always looking at how do we help mother nature and how do we do tech that's close as close to mother nature as possible yeah, emulate it. And then that's and all these conversations I keep hearing, you know, people like, you know, they love to question you in Clubhouse about the about the product and whatnot. But that's that's why I, I love to sit back and listen to you is because that biomimicry you're always talking about, uh it, learning from Mother Nature and like it, that's why it gets so it, it can get a little contentious, uh, but you always handle it with such grace. Well, it's contentious because people have normalized things. Um, I mean we've normalized things to the point where we believe it. Like I talk about our health industry. We never, we don't even help. We don't go after the cause. We go after the symptom mm -hmm. and we treat the symptom so we can be in a pres prescription program. And they, you know, uh, Dave, Dave Wilcox did a song that says, uh, crack will kill you quick, but they'll get more of your money if they, kill you nice and slow right so what happens is and i think that's going in in the cannabis world too um uh, i have one slide that i've share when i do talks with when i'm with uh jeff lowenfels and we do a lot of um conferences in the past before covid i have one slide that that shows indoor cannabis as being poison and outdoor and growing with mother nature's as not and a lot of people come and give me a hard time about this. Like, why, what do you mean? What do you, we're, I said, well, you, you, there's no way you can pull out all the chemicals you use to grow. The plant is a bioremedial. It's going to suck everything up. So how in the heck are you going to measure parts per million or parts per billion and it'll bioaccumulate in your body and it's poison. So how can you in your right mind say, I've mutated the plant to do this or and some people say adapted, but you know, how can you live with yourself when you know you put that on the shelf and somebody's taking it? So I, I'm just saying that, and I'm not saying all indoor growers like that, by the way. I'm not saying that. There are people who are growing and living soil. Uh, you know, they have to keep feeding it. Uh, hard to get a regenerative going. Uh, but for the most part, the larger ones are not doing that. And that's poison. Right. So how do you do it like mother nature? That's, that was the question. Um, so. 
And, and, and that's what drives you guys as from a business standpoint too, but not just that, like a community standpoint, because this, your, your guys' lights and your, and your growing system, that what you're, you're always talking about clubhouse isn't just for the hemp and cannabis industry. This can be utilized for all plants, for the future of the population, for growing our own food. Well, yeah. So that's another thing we've normalized. Um, we feel that going down to the grocery store that we are getting nutritious food. And we're not. We've allowed the Monsantos of the world, the Cargills of the world to come in and manipulate our food for pretty much three reasons. Shelf life, transportation, marketing, color. That's it. But they forgot what a plant is supposed to be for. If you go to the big block stores or you go to Costco here in California, you see at least three rows of supplements. How do you know which supplement to buy? Oh, you, you know, it's your blood. You got to measure your, your, oh no, it's the paleo. It's all these things come out so people can sell books. So doctors can make money and the drug companies and the vitamin, but how do you know? You don't, you don't know. And everybody's body is different and everybody's physiology and chemistry is different. So what may work for one person in just take D, it'll be great. Um, how, mon, how much D? Oh, you'll just pee it out. It's not a problem. It is a problem because if you're uh, going down and taking supplements and mixing it, you don't know if you've given your body the right combination for your lower gut and your lower immune system. You're not. So what happened with the indoor agriculture business and which I'm saddened to say the indoor cannabis business is following is go to vertical growth, to go to hydroponics, to go to autoponics, which is nothing like mother nature. It's not even close to mother nature. It's guessing again. And then, and then a lot of people say, Oh, son, I, you're not, you don't know what you're talking about. You should see my my plants. My plants are doing just great. I know what the hell I'm doing. I'm you know what? You can't call yourself a master grower. You only you know as a human being, we have twenty five thousand genes. If if the metrics is is judging intelligence in life, genes and genetics, and you're a geneticist, you seem to go that. Let's go with that. Cannabis has thirty five thousand genes. Humans have twenty five thousand genes. You tell me which is fast, smarter. How does a plant grow in granite? How does a plant grow in the sidewalk? When you're on the freeway, it's growing between the lanes. Did Monsanto show up? Did you show up with some kind of biochar, blah, blah, blah? Or, or doesn't it just do it on its own? So no matter what you do to that plant indoors, it's going to grow because it needs to survive. So it's going to grow and yeah, it's going to mutate and yeah, you'll have some yield, but does it have all the compounds, the secondary metabolites, all of the trichomes and some um, compounds we haven't even measured. We don't even know they exist right now because it used to be 400. Now it's 1200. How do they, what do they all just show up somehow? They've been in the plant. It didn't like show up, you know, all of a sudden today, God said, okay, it's been sitting in the plant for years. Ah, right. Yeah. Since Mother nature developed it 10,000, 12,000 years ago, but you have bred it out for making money or to, so your ego can have a name, you know, Skittles and whatever, just so you can have a branding. But what the hell did you do to the plant? And what did you do to the people who actually count on that plant for a medicine? Mm -hmm. I or not. And even Kevin Jodry now is talking, you know, he's working with an Afghan group trying to keep the Afghan land race alive. But he's not doing it because he wants it himself. He's doing it so they can spread the seed out so that Afghan Kush can be around. That's the kind of people I want to work with. That's the kind of people as a company we want to work with. The ones who respect the plant, see the growing of the plant from the plant's point of view, not from your point of view, to, to manipulate and turn it and do whatever. That would be like taking your kid 
putting him in a boat and giving him only cereal, he's going to probably live, but he's not going to get all the, all the medicinal quality. Yeah, no, I survived off cereal pretty much alone throughout the 90s. That and waffles, so yeah, you're right. But you're not going to be healthy? Not at all, not at all. <clears throat> so, but yeah, that's and that's biomimicry, not in a nutshell, but like, you know, the kind of life of biomimicry too is like, you know, just like the plant itself has taught me since growing it. Correct, correct, correct. And so we, the scientific approach to me in cannabis is this. Uh, you emulate nature, you put the plant first, the genetics, you use biomimicry, nature, you target what you want it for, the patient, the user, the need, and that creates the quality, the degree. You treat the planet well by doing it sustainable and regenerative, and then you look at profit. You go, okay, well, what kind of leveraging can I do to make money out of this? And if you do all of that, you're going to make more money and be able to do more plant growing than you ever imagined. Otherwise, you're going to be a me too product. You're not going to be different in the marketplace, except by name. And you're going to have a short lived non-sustainable because the high is going to just hit you a little bit. It's not going to be like a full body that goes starts here and works its way and you actually feel good. And it does something for you. It's just a, a flash in the pan. And it's a grow, a grow, bro, I call it, kind of growing. And you're <laughs> just going to go down there and your buddy's going to go, hey, man, I got this, you know, I don't know, you know, two-step uh, cookie. Man, it's amazing. Dank. Really? It's closed bud, grown in an LED. There's, I, I can't understand that one either. Yeah, th does, it, does it have a little bit of CBD or CBGA or any of those other cannabinoids in there that I personally need for my medical benefits? You don't know. Yeah. And then they lose it. They get genetic drift. They get to the point where they've, 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 they've cloned it over and over and over and they lose it. And then they're worried. How do I get it back? And I said, well, we don't, you don't get it back. It's like music. When you hit a low E on a piano, it vibrates the high E. It's about frequency. So if you are not using frequency on the plant, you can't get those compounds to come out. You can't do it by chemicals. You can do a little bit. That's like the Beethoven's fifth. If a tuba section played it, you more than likely would recognize it and everybody will say, oh, that's Beethoven's fifth. But if you have the full philharmonic orchestra doing it my goodness right you now hear it so what we've done is done biomimicry and the idea we had when we went to the shows you just talked about mj biz okay yes we went to mj biz a couple of times a lot of suits a lot of people trying to figure out how to make money a lot of people from uh, indoor ag trying to a lot of people with branding and all these ancillary things necessary, but very few people talking about the plant. Oh, I who, noticed. Who there at MJ Biz is representing the plant? They're representing every other facet of the market, the plant. So my crippled, my crippled ass in my wheelchair was there representing the plant. That's who it was. And, and, and I quickly... Look, I've been doing conventions for 11 years and I love a good convention. So like, I understand exactly where you're coming from, but at the same time, I love technology conventions. And so it was interesting seeing some of the different things coming out there on the market that were the ancillary things as well. But it's so easy for me to recognize the difference between the suits you're talking about, uh, who are there drinking on the side and smoking their cigarettes and figuring out how to increase their profit margins versus the people in between that, yes, they enjoy the plant or they end up for the right reasons and they're going to make their money versus the few in there that are just all about respect for mother nature and the plant. And they know the money's going to come. Right. Right. So, I, you know, so when we went to these shows, we realized that if you took away the, the card makers and the media guys and the website guys and the branding guys and the, all the ones that most industries use anyway, if I took all that out, what was left? Well, what was left was people mitigating 
sunlight, trying to figure out ways because you're not, you're only getting at best 21 to 23 percent of the energy of the sun, which we all need to live with, all of us, everything on the planet would die if the sun went away. And you're only putting 21 to 23 percent of that energy into a room in a controlled atmosphere. And you're wondering why the plant isn't growing. So what you have to do now is come up with different soil mixtures and additives and salts and minerals and NPK. And, and you're learning that from the indoor ag who haven't perfected it. And you go, oh, let's do autoponics. Oh, we get the shit from, from, from you know, fish. That's going to do it. Where in the world is cannabis growing with shit from, from, from fish? Where, where in the world are plants growing in LED purple lights? Where? Tell, show me the, that address or that area of the world. It's not. Show me where things are growing vertical except by a waterfall. Show me the fact that you can only grow pretty much tomatoes and leafy greens and sprouts. How about, have you shown me an indoor blueberries? Indoor eggplant, indoor okra, indoor artichokes, indoor because when you as a vegan myself, I need a full rainbow of food to give me the nutrients I need, like grandma's garden used to. As a human, you need that. Yes. And I can't get it at the grocery store. I gotta go get supplements. So for the food area, we want to have strategic partners and grow and relations and collective to grow locally. And, you know, we talk about water in California and, oh, we just had some. But that'll be gone soon. Think about the normalization here. California complains about water. Northern California always, water, water, water. We grow 30 to 35% of the produce for entire United States. We're subsidizing with our water all of those other states. If we were growing locally, in this, and like Mother Nature, we wouldn't have to ship it. We wouldn't have to have these massive grows taking away all the water. So let's do that more. Let's not normalize that. We've normalized that. That's how it's accepted. Normalize, say, normalize supporting your local farmer. Correct. Normalize doing that. The farmer, the geneticist, keep a circular economy going so that the Money doesn't go up to a big corporation somewhere in New York that stays within your own community. Create the job. Teach them how to grow. Get the healthy food. Teach them what food growing is. Teach them about the immune system and the stomach and what fruits and vegetables will get you there. So that's the, and, and even for animal farming, think about how you keep those in without sunlight. You, you, get, you get lots of infections they're not in sunlight they're not in uv so we can use this for animal farming we can use it for fisheries there's all kinds of areas so most people don't believe and so yeah i get a lot of uh, challenges and i love them i don't i don't have a problem with that but it does show me that they've normalized themselves and uh when i ask some hard questions it's really you know like normalized to the point where they're talking about i think there's one site that a couple of our friends are on where they're selling domain names. And I'm like, okay, that's really great. Um, how does that help us get medicinal cannabis out the door? Like, I mean, how does, that's great that you got domain names. And how do you come up with all these, you know, names of plants just so you can own them? But that's the ego part. That's, that's the ego part of it, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, and by the way, I may, I want to make a A short uh, statement. I am, I am, and I am. Whatever I add to that is ego. If I say I am handsome or I am uh, smart or I, that's ego, right? But I am. So I only know those things I have experienced. And so when I speak, it's not because I'm an expert. It's not because I know it all. It's only those things I have experienced in my life and the growers that I've worked with and the 
nature that I've been with. That's my viewpoint. So there are a lot of people, all different kinds of divergent viewpoints, and I welcome them. But I do say this, though. No matter what we do in, in the world, Mother Nature comes and fixes it. Mm -hmm. So for you or anybody else to think, not you personally, third person you, no. <laughs> that you were going to you. You mutate this plant in a way that's going to be better than Mother Nature for its part playing that everything is connected you're very mistaken and it's going to be extremely short and mother nature is going to come and clean it out and go what is that yep and and, and i understand the high thc fascination i get that sometimes i need those types but sure. and, and i get made fun and made fun of in clubhouse when i say that at some point back in the history there was a perfect plant they're yeah. like oh that wasn't smokable i'm like what did i say about smoking it like there's yeah. lots of ways to consume it lots of ways to utilize it but at some point it was a perfect plant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if you do if you grow like mother nature you have to have sunlight you have to have living soil you have the abiotic and biotic kind of conditions necessary to emulate mother nature and you have to grow a regenerative and you need full expression plants. Otherwise, you're not going to get all the, the uh, benefits of that plant, all healing plants, not just cannabis. Uh, but the way if you do it with Mother Nature, you can protect your genetics, you can, you can have shorter grow, you can reduce crop loss because of pest and disease because you got a healthy plant, you can have higher yield without the chemical inputs. You can get really novel cannabinoids because you get full expression that you haven't seen. Right. You get full genetic expression. You get that sort of medicinal and connoisseur type of product. And we you, haven't even talked terpenes yet. No. And you can get reduced operating costs. You can, and your risk is lower if you grow like Mother Nature because you're not allowing the, you're not weakening the plant to the point where. It can't do what it's supposed to do. All the other functions are not working. So, the, and the patient gets clean products, grown without toxic inputs, uh, easier to access the top tier products. You, you reduce the environmental impact and you get diversity of genetics. If you go in the store, how many different versions of Blue Dream can you get from how many different growers? Seriously? And, and, and how many of them are even the same? Yeah. Yeah. But with investors, you know, we are looking for investor. We're looking for impact or angel investor or somehow a cooperative investor because we've put a lot of money, our personal money into it. We can, they can leave a legacy. They can have something different than what they did. And they can actually say they have medicine and they yeah. can be different in the market. They can, they can get a cash cow because they have massive returns. But, you know, I, I say all these things. One of the things I was thinking about earlier is just to show, show you something that I think would be really important. Uh, just because, you know, I talk about these lights uh, and the sun on demand uh, this way. Uh, and people, you know, people don't have to understand what it is. So if you don't mind, let me share a screen. Absolutely. So for everyone on the audio podcast, uh, this is why you go to our YouTube channel backslash DTR show to see the video production. Great. Is there a way you can uh, allow me to, because oh. you've disabled screen sharing. Oh, is it disabled? Mm -hmm. Okay. Multiple participants can share simultaneously. No worries. Advanced sharing options. Now try. Got it? I think so. Yeah, you did. Okay. Okay. So been, here. Been, been a while since I've used that function. No worries. So you see this, right? Can you see it? I see it. They One do not. <laughs> okay. So LEDs are just here in this blue or this red. They don't even have a green. Now there is a green available, but it takes so much power to the, the green, uh, the blue and the red would be. So what they do, they create a point at the tip here and a point here, whoops, sorry. And then they normalize, they create a line and go, oh, I got all these frequencies. They don't. Hmm. The yellow here is sunlight and the green is our light. We 
absolutely emulated. These spikes are just like sun, sun uh, things. They're, they're very low power, very high. So, uh, and the sun actually changes at different times doing that as well. But it's very narrow band and ours is exactly sunlight. Now, what does that mean in real life? And this is where a lot of the guys that, that do come after me on there don't understand. So let me share this with you, right? Um, whoops. So when you have life beyond par, this is where they run, operate, 43% of the sun. So they don't have ultraviolet. They don't have uh, infrared. So here's a good one. Here's a visual, okay? There's 24,000 watts here and uh, of, of uh, HPS, so high pressure sodium lights. You got these ballasts, 50% of his light, 50% is heat, which is why you need this air conditioning, this duct, this duct. All that is to absorb the heat coming out of these ballasts. You can see the plants are kind of droopy. I and our company replaced that with one light. Holy crap. Okay, this one is the first- 1100 watt, five amp light, like a hair conditioner. I mean, a hair uh, dryer. The plants are in 20 minutes praying. You can even see the shadow. So look, take, I go back. You see the shadow here? How uh -huh. it's pulled, you see- some of the light, it's, it's not sunlight. Here, you have sunlight. One light, 1100 watt, replacing 24,000 watts of light. Well, it's not just that. I was paying attention when you were talking the other day about uh, not just uh, your output of wattage versus how much is used uh, in your product versus LED. Please go into that. Yeah, so we are we promise a hundred by a hundred square feet per light 10 by 10 but as you can see we cover a lot more than that this 500 square foot room yeah this is the first time i've seen these photos this is amazing and see the lights up here even and the reason i'm telling you is there's so many photons coming off of here that the resolution is sharp in fact this edge is sharper than the edge on the on the metal now, look, okay, look, as a video producer who has been filming at conventions around the country, I actually, I actually had them shut off some lights that were, I just couldn't color correct my camera at one point. It, they, it was on the wrong switch and uh, half the convention lights went down. It was really embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> never tried that again. Never tried that again. But just from a video standpoint, sure. I can visually see the difference between the lights. Yeah, yeah. And because of this, you know, I can do 8K, 4K <clears throat> video. I can do uh 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 what do you call um time lapse with one camera and one phoenix camera at 100,000 frames a second not a problem without having multiple lights multiple crammers cuz you're dropping frames and all this doesn't happen and okay. i'm right at 5600 so no matter when you turn it on for 100,000 hours you're going to be at 5600 no matter what so um so the reason i'm showing you here is we obviously would put five in here, but still at 5,500 watts, it's a hell of a lot less than 2,400 watts. So what we then do is we cut half the air conditioning costs too. And the infrastructure cost for people, if they have a new building, they actually pay for the light and just the savings on air conditioning and cost and the late lights kind of come for free. So. So here's a big 2,100 square foot uh, grow in Oakland called Nug. Um, and this is 20, we, they had 66,000 watts of sodium lighting and we went down to 22,000 watts. LED would have been 58,000. And even with the PG&E giving a rebate, we were cheaper in price. Woo. So it's not money that we're after. We're trying to create medicine. So, I mean, I can keep going on a lot of different slides and I don't want to bore you, but, but basically- This is what Clubhouse has been asking you for though. Yeah, <laughs> so sh show all those damn slides and I'll make everyone come watch this. <laughs> so anyway, that basically shows what we can do in the industry and what we're doing. 
And, you know, the other part of this, I can keep going with regards to, but here's the one where we're protecting the genetics, a 360 win for everybody. Uh, and so it isn't that we're trying to make a win for us, but, and then we can do, I mean, you talk about trichomes, look at this. Yeah, that's beautiful. Significant more growth. So <laughs> this is headband. Headband's usually popcorny. Mm -hmm. This is a land race from Mexico. Look at the sugar on the leaves. Forget being it on here. Look. And this is the lower branch of a Molokai frost. That's a lower branch? Yes, sir. That's, that's like both of my upper branches on what I got behind me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I'll stop this, but, but I just wanted you to get an idea that when I speak about these things of God doing like mother nature, you can have companion plants. Now you can, and another th good thing about growers that are doing this is you can have a, a crop that'll, that'll do faster than your cannabis crop. And you can make money while waiting for the, for the harvest. Yeah. Some people. Yeah. And one guy is, you know, it, it depends on kind of products, but you could do parsley, you could do, hala, I mean, you could do saffron selling for $5,600 a pound. Oh. I mean, you can do all local with your plant. And it penetrates all the way down. So into the soil, like the sun does. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So I'm just trying to find ways to collaborate with people. That is really, uh, really what we're after. And uh, yesterday, one of our growers sent a photo. Uh, let me see if I have it here. One of the growers up in Canada. Um, oops, no, that's the wrong one. Where is it? Yeah, here. I'll share this one too. Hold on. See what I'm talking about? Wow, that is crystally. I mean, you can. Yes. You can practically count the trichomes. They're so big. <laughs> look, at, look at the tips. Look at the tips. It's insane. Yes. And look how far down. <laughs> so this is what happens. And here's our sun and demand lights. And this guy is not even growing in living soil. Imagine what happens when it goes to living soil, because Canada won't allow it. So. Yeah. Wow. That is gorgeous. All right. Well, speaking of gorgeous, not to change the topic, let's talk about those amazing instruments behind you. Oh. And let's and let's talk about your music so people can go find it if, if it's available publicly to share. No, I don't do any public sharing. Um, okay. So what got, a, what got you into music and how does that also relate to your spirituality and cannabis? Well, because I think life is all about frequency. Um, and music to me... Uh, I'm known as DJ Sincere on Facebook, S-I-N-S-E-E-R. And um, I've been producing and recording. I'm a recording engineer as well. Um, my goal in music, that's my first love. Um, and it's, it's frequency. And so it's different for different people what music is. For me, music is the sound of the leaves going through trees in the forest. For me, music is the sound of birds and animals. For me, music is a babbling brook. And I want to challenge everybody that's listening to this. This is why I think the Sun on Demand works so well is because we've emulated it and because why Mother Nature has developed the land races the way it has to be into perfection, the kind of medicine and spirituality that it's supposed to give, not supposed to, that does give to us and that it took this long for us to discover it. Ancients have done it already. This is, some, this is not a new drug. <laughs> it's not even a drug actually in the true sense of the word. So it's, 
if you go to a brook and you're walking by yourself, by yourself is the best way. Listen to the sound of the water falling on rocks. And the rocks are randomly placed in the stream. And they drop and they make a sound. Another one uh, is only dropping this far. Another one is dropping this far. Did you ever notice? Never out of tune. Never sharp. Never flat. Birds. Never out of tune. Never sharp. Never flat. I have a good ear. I do. Why is that? Never, Why is it at different steps? I never noticed that. That is music. That is when I talk music. That's what I'm talking about. So those frequencies of sound, of light, of vibration, is what we are all about. We are frequency. What we see, it's like a peacock. The peacock has no colors. It's brown. And this is where LED comes into play. LEDs are like peacocks. They're gray. And our lights see the colors based on the sunlight refracting and coming back to us. There is no color there. It's wavelength. LEDs are wavelength. So because it's purple, it's coming red in there, very narrow band. It's only one color. In order to make a white one, they put phosphorus in front of it and diffuse it and trick the mind from a luminous flux as though it's that color. But guess what? None of the frequencies of those colors are present. Otherwise, it would penetrate. It would go through the leaves, and it doesn't do that. The, only the sun does, and of course, the sun on demand. So, music is everything to us. It's all about frequency. It's all about our connectiveness with each other. All of us have frequencies that go out from our solar. And this is how we sometimes, oh, I know you from somewhere, or God, you're so familiar, or I really like you, or I don't like you, because there's some, you know, they're hitting each other and like, wait a minute, this is not, that's what that is. That's music. That's the frequency. That's the frequency of sunlight. That's the frequency of sound. That's the frequency of music. So yes, I'm a musician like that. So when you hear, and that's the difference between analog and digital. Oh, when you hear, okay, that's a whole nother hour of conversation. <laughs> it, is. it is, it is. That's a big difference. When you someone plays a stand up bass, you feel it. When someone plays a regular bass, you can hear the speakers, but you don't get the feeling. No, what you're feeling is that bass drum and that yep. drummer in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, obviously, for me, frequency is music and music is frequency and the world is music and everything I hear about it is music. So, that's my first love is Mother Nature, music, and that. that that's why we became friends so fast. Like, that's everything I say and believe and talk about, but not so eloquently. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I, I don't know if you have any other questions, but I do. I, I like to end every show with the same three questions. Oh, okay. Because I've been doing this for a while and I'm an old school nerd and this started as an entertainment, you know, podcast. So, sure. but I also, I also feel that these three questions are very, very revealing about a person's character. Sure. So, uh, question number one, who's your favorite superhero or just regular hero? It can be Batman. Mine's Superman. Mother Nature. Damn good answer, which I have a feeling I know where all of this is going. <laughs> and you've already explained the why. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there that's it. I don't know of any. Yeah. Every every good story, the hero is only as good as the villain. Who's your favorite villain? Mine's Darth Vader. In my view of the world and context the biggest villain is human beings. Yeah. And we don't know any better, I don't think, because we, th we think we can outthink mother and father, son, and all that. And there's the dilemma. Um, when we had COVID, and well, we still have COVID, but 
in the year that we were sequestered and told to stay home, there's a movie by the BBC that talks about, I think it's the year that was or year that won. Um, you have to look it up, but BBC the year. Um, the Ganges River cleared up. More whales were having babies. Uh, it's as though Mother Nature just said, okay, you guys are not here. I'm just going to come back and clean. And it did. You could see the mountains of the Himalayas, mountains from India, where people of three, four generations have never seen it because they live in that area and the smog and everything is so bad. But it's worth watching to see the power of Mother Nature. So I would say it's us. Um, we're too intelligent for ourselves and we're too ego driven. We're not enough in I am. We're always in I am smart or I am this or I did this or I. The I comes in too much and we forgot about the we and the us. I had a feeling that was going to be your answer. Yay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I agree so much with everything there, <clears throat> which. I mean, this last question is kind of mooting to the point now, but, you know, it, it, it's very telling for most people, but we already know where you've already said it all, but who's your, who's your real life hero? Who inspires you on a daily basis? Ooh, a real life hero. Um, boy, I think it's a morphed person of, uh, you know, people like Gandhi and Martin Luther, people who who don't think about themselves as the first stop. They think of everything else other than that as the first stop. You, 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 you give so much that you don't have time to worry about yourself. You're just giving all the time. Um, and I think, so I don't know of one person, it's just like I've been married three times, uh, and I might get married again. I don't know. Uh, but I, you can never find everything you want that you think you want, you know, in one person. Because I, you know, the one person might like symphony music and the other people like rap. And they go, I, I'm never listening. I'm like, no, it's all the same. Because if you can imagine in an 88 key board, how many different songs you can write. And I always tell people also with music, going back to that, and it ties in here. When you ask me that question, it's like asking me, what is music? And what is my favorite villain? And where my hero? And who do I look up to? In music, there are only so many notes to write a song. But that's not what a song is. The song is the quiet between the notes. That's what I look at. For me, it's the quiet between the notes. It's the space there. It's not the note. And I think that's my hero. It's the space between notes. Because it allows me to express. It allows the plants to express. I mean, look, here's how normalized we are. <laughs> Whoever is listening to that, on has time and you myself we're hurling through space at a hundred thousand miles an hour right now the earth is spinning at a thousand miles an hour and we're worried about a tesla going 200 miles an hour or 150 our concepts are so screwed up because we make things into our metrics that are not real and so I appreciate those questions. Um, this is the reason why myself and our company are looking for collaborative partners. We're not saying, hey, we've got this great panacea. It's the best thing. You know, it's better than that. We're not a lighting company. We're a wellness sustainability company. It just If I could have done this with a paper bag, I would do it. But I happen to emulate sunlight. And we're able to do it now. And we're able to bring food security. We're able to build full expression medicine. And what I want to help people do is to earn money from that so they can 
do more, give away their genetics so other people can grow, make enough to live and support and help your family um, and use the medicine to heal your family and use all kinds of healing plants and good food to keep yourself healthy so, you, so that we can live through little moments of our lives. And I enjoy that. And this time together with you, Casey, I'm very, very happy because you have allowed me a time to spend that I will never forget. I really do appreciate that. And whoever else is listening, since it's cannabis, let's work together. Let's figure out a way to do it. Let's have you figure out a way to make money. I mean, in other words, help me help you. And, and how do they reach out to your company to collaborate? Okay. Um, we're at thesunondemand.com, thesunondemand.com, or azentive, A-Z-E-N-T-I-V-E.com. Uh, or you can Instagram us. Uh, you know, you can, you can send an Indian runner or a pygmy runner. You can send smoke signals. I don't care. Just get in <laughs> touch with us. <laughs> Um, but you know, I'd like, uh, I don't know how close we are to our time, but, um, and, until my body says you need to get out of this chair. Okay. Well, I have some items I've got to do. I've got actually. Okay. Excellent. Well, in that case, but, go ahead. In that case, I am. <laughs> yes. I like that. And but that's I, enough. I wanted, say, I wanted to say something, you know, we, 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 we talk, let's not be two-faced about cannabis. Mm -hmm. plant. On one side, we talk about the spirituality and you have, you know, your show on, and, the, and you're a pastor and you believe in all this. And the other side, you mutilate the plant. You put it in situations that it shouldn't be in. You feed it stuff. It's a sentient being. When I see them in indoor grows all strapped up, and they've 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 cut you know the leaves of the solar panels of this plant that's like putting solar panels on your roof and going down honey i'm going to go cut the wires that's where it gets its energy and yet in a lot of these grows we top the plants we we look at its brown we feed it all kinds of stuff to try and then we talk about it in shows like we are a hero Oh, I figured that out. How did you take care of that? Oh, powdery mildew. Yeah, just normal. It's just fog. Or, you know, spider mites. Oh, let's just get another plant. Uh, 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 let's just go to another part of the world and let's get an insect that's going to come in and eradicate this one in my grow. Oh, okay. Now I have more of these other ones I just brought. Let me go get another one from another part of the world. These plants don't, these insects don't even live together there is no symbiotic relationship and then you wonder why your growth grows going why did i get mealybugs why did i because you took it away from mother nature and the plant is doing the best it can i know mine is so on one side please treat the plant if you're saying you're spiritual blood plant you think it's a healing plant then please treat it that way and do as close to mother nature as possible. And don't just do it only. If you don't want to do that, then go out and mutate it and make money. It's going to be short-lived, I guarantee you. Because you're going to brand compete like you're going to need a hip-hop star or a sports figure to get your product out. And it's all going to be about the color and the branding. And then you're going to fight for, for space. But what if it's that restaurant that you discovered with your friends in the back alley that stave papers on paper plates they give you the best meal you ever had don't you go back to that every time do you go to the brand one is you know so let's do that with our plants let's make real medicine together now so treat that plant we say we love flowers yet we pluck them we say we love trees yet we cut them down and people still wonder why some, some people are afraid when I say, I love you. I love you. 
And I, this guy, this sentient being, am humbled and gracious for your presence here. Thank you very much. Thank and I look forward to all of our continued chats on Clubhouse and just, uh, you know, it's a pleasure just seeing your shiny, bright, you're, <laughs> you're pretty much exactly how I imagined, like, as, as a human being, not like physically, but just like your presence. Thank you. If you know what I mean. I know you know what I mean. So uh, just much love to you and everything you do, and I'll see you somewhere down the road. Yes, thank, thank you very much, Casey, for all your time and effort. And I wish you well. If there's any way I can help you, please let me know. Well, I plan on, once they built me that hemp church, I plan on doing outdoor grows. If that ain't happening, I prefer the sun method. So I've been listening to everybody talk. And Well, for outdoor grows, you know, we, we harden the plant. We, we do a lot of things. That's why a lot of people wonder, even, even the investors, why are you going up to a dry farmer You're trying to sell lights? I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm trying to get plants out. So there's a lot of things we can do for out, outdoor farmers. And with that said, much love, brother. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.